Hi, my name is Stefan Korshak. I'm the senior defense correspondent for Kiev Post newspaper, and we are honored and grateful to have uh, Major General David Baldwin with us from the California National Guard, and he's agreed to answer a few questions about uh, Ukraine and uh, cooperation with the Ukrainian military. It turns out that uh, his organization has been one of the leaders for quite a long time. David, glad to have you with us. Stefan, thank you. It's great to be here. Okay, so my first question, which I have written down, is could you please tell us a little bit? I was really impressed when I read about it. I'm not sure that many people really understand how much your organization, the California National Guard, has done with the Ukrainian military over the years. And then also, of course, uh, what's going on right now? What are you guys and that organization doing with the Ukrainians at the moment? And of course, why are you here in Ukraine? Sure. I'll start with the last question first. Um, I'm here at the invitation of Mr. Vlad Scotts, who's the founder of Ukraine American House Sacramento, and in concert with American University Kiev, which is a brand new school that actually started during the war, which is just amazing, um, invited me to participate in the um, Ukraine American Forum on Economic Development and Demining. I retired from the Cal Guard after 40 years of service last year, went into business, and one of our main business lines of operations is to do whatever we can as a company to help Ukraine. The Cal Guards enjoyed a 30-year partnership with the Armed Forces and Security Services of Ukraine that began after the fall of the Berlin Wall, where we partnered National Guard states with former Soviet republics to fundamentally to help teach their militaries how to be a military in a constitutional democracy where the civilians are in charge. Well, this is a very interesting situation, I think, that you find yourself in, because this is one of those cases where all that training now is being put to use. Exactly. It was, it's no longer theoretical. So what do you think? Uh, how is the Ukrainian military doing now that it's uh, having to actually function as a fighting force? So I know for most people in the West, not the Cal Guard, because we knew better, but most people in the West were stunned at how well the Ukrainian armed forces and security services have been done, that not only did they defeat the illegal invaders when they escalated the war last year, but they defeated them soundly and continue to push them back and have successes on the battlefield. That was a surprise to many. Of course, with our so many years of experience and our seeing the change and the transformation and reformation of the Ukrainian military, we knew that they would do well, particularly the Air Force because a lot of people said the Ukrainian Air Force would last about 20 minutes. Well, they're still no. flying today. <laughs> yeah. They're very capable pilots, and we are very, very proud of them for their bravery, their innovation, for all of the armed forces and the things that they do. All okay, right, so um, they clearly have sort of defied the odds and uh, achieved things that most people had really no expectation of. And now we're in a situation where the Ukrainians apparently are and you recently spoke with General Zaluzhny, uh, appear, are, appear to be in a good position, they're in a good mood, their attitude is positive, and they're looking to kick off probably a major attack. But it's a big war, and it's a very dangerous opponent. And uh, one of the questions that we have here uh, in uh, at Kiev Post is, uh, although the Western assistance to Ukraine is absolutely critical, I mean, the, the Ukraine probably would not have been able to survive in its present state, without that assistance. If the goal is to end the war, and if Western assistance is the tool with which Ukraine can bring that war to an end, why, in your opinion, as a senior U.S. Uh, officer, is it so incremental? Why not give the Ukrainians right now the tools, for instance, to isolate Crimea? And you're to, to the degree that you can So this that incrementalism question. that you speak about has been very, very frustrating for us as partners and close friends of the leaders of the Ukrainian military, because as, you, as you've seen, every time there's a debate, and it's always a political debate, about if we give them this system, if we give them javelins, that'll cross the red line. Well, we gave you javelins, and didn't cross the red line. If we give you HIMARS, if we give you name whatever system is next. But every time the Ukrainians take what we give them and push right up and then step over that line, What's the reaction of the adversaries? They continue to fall back. They continue to get defeated. And it, it, I'll use the analogy of a schoolyard bully. You don't defeat a bully who's doing something illegal or wrong on the playground by backing down, by drawing lines you won't cross. You take the fight to him, you do it decisively, you kick his butt, and you throw him out of Ukraine. So why do you think that uh, 
the greater U.S. leadership has not taken that approach. It's a policy. It's a policy decision at the end of the day, but it's also born perhaps of miscalculation about what the real intent, motivations, and and what the threats are from from the Russians and what they'll tolerate and what they won't tolerate. And I think that we're finding that as we continue to stand up them collectively, not just the Ukrainians, but the West together, they never expected that. Yeah. And now that we're coming on strong through support to Ukraine and the fight that Ukrainians are taking, then um, we're seeing great success. Now, my personal position, you know, we want to win this war as quickly as possible and do everything we can to help Ukraine do that. And my definition of winning the war is restoring the pre-2014 borders of Ukraine, all of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I see. All right, I'm going to, um, I, the general had uh, mentioned as we were walking into this room that he uh, met with General Zaluzhny and uh, had mentioned a few things about the impression that he got. And I think it might be interesting if you told our viewers, sort of, what's your impression of General Zaluzhny? He doesn't appear in public very much, but you talk to the man. The guy so, is, how, how is he? The guy is the right leader at the right time for this country. He is, he is. Um, inspirational, he's charismatic, he's smart, he has a plan, and he's in remarkably good spirits. He looks great. You know, he, he is not, he, he is, it's, I expected to see someone that might be a little fatigued, but the guy is smiling, he's got a plan, and here's the other thing that's remarkable. He is not just focused on fighting the current fight. He's already thinking about and focused, has a focus on continuing to reform the Ukrainian military and building the, up the Ukrainian military after this conflict. That's really remarkable. Wow, that's really impressive. Okay, well, that's the end of uh, the questions that I wanted to ask, but I think that it would be great if I, we offered you an opportunity to just uh, speak to the camera. Maybe you have a message for the Ukrainian people. I have a message for the West and then for the Ukrainian people. So, so first for the West. We need to do three things. Let's continue to support Ukraine, win this war, win this war decisively. Number two, we have to have a very robust effort to assist with humanitarian demining. Mines and unexploded ordnance are all over this country, and it's a scourge. It's killing innocent men, women, and children, and we need to pump in millions, if not billions, of dollars to assist to clean this country up. And the third thing, Ukraine has so much economic potential, tremendous, tremendous economic potential. But my appeal to... Businesses in the West, don't wait. Start investing now. Ukraine's open for business. I'm here. There you have it. We have a man from, uh, a general from California. Here he is in Ukraine, and uh, his take is that uh, he's probably going to come back. And my word, my word for the Ukrainian people is I could not be more proud, they should not be more proud of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, the Ukrainian Border Guard, Ukrainian National Guard, Ukrainian Police, Ukrainians... Uh, state emergency services, all of the people in uniform fighting for freedom, not just for Ukraine, but all of the West. I'm very proud of them, and Ukrainian people should be very proud. Well, we're very grateful that you came here to talk with us. Thank you very much for your time. This is Stefan Korshak, Senior Defense Correspondent, Kiev Post.